ground under the Central Valley is continuing to sink and it's causing big problems for Valley farmers. As Action News reporter Gene Higginson shows us, the sinking has called, caused canals to run uphill in spots. From the air, it looks like a paradise in decline. But look closer at the telephone poles and you'll see the terrifying truth. The ground beneath the Central Valley isn't just dry, it is collapsing. Over the last century, the earth here has dropped nearly 30 feet, the height of a three-story building. This isn't a slow environmental shift. It is a structural failure of the American heartland. What follows is the aftermath that nobody, not even the farmers, saw coming. The scale of this disaster is hard to grasp until you see the physical scars left on the horizon. For a century, California's Central Valley has been the world's most productive patch of dirt. It produces a quarter of the nation's food, from the almonds in your pantry to the tomatoes on your burger. To the casual traveler driving down Highway 99, it still looks like an endless sea of green. But hidden behind the rows of lush orchards is a landscape in the middle of a violent structural breakdown. We have spent decades treating the earth like a limitless resource, and now the bill has finally come due. The footage captured today reveals a region that is literally folding in on itself. We are seeing bridges that have sunk so low, they are now submerged in the very canals they were built to cross. We are seeing massive, multi-million dollar irrigation projects that have become useless because the ground beneath them shifted, forcing water to flow backward against the pull of gravity. It is a slow-motion earthquake that never stops, triggered not by tectonic plates, but by a desperate, unchecked thirst. This is more than a story about a drought or a bad harvest. It is a story about the end of an era. The aftermath isn't a future threat. It is the reality on the ground right now. As we fly over the cracked earth and the skeletal remains of abandoned towns, we aren't just looking at a water crisis. We are looking at the permanent deformation of the American West. To understand how a valley sinks 30 feet into the earth, we have to look at the invisible ocean hidden beneath the soil. The ground is vanishing. To understand why the Central Valley is physically disappearing, you have to visualize what lies beneath the surface. For thousands of years, this basin acted as a massive geological bathtub, filled with layers of sand, gravel, and heavy clay. Deep within those layers sat a prehistoric ocean of fresh water known as an aquifer. When the first settlers arrived, they found a valley so lush it was often compared to Eden. But as the surface water from rivers was claimed and diverted, farmers began to look down. They tapped into that underground bank account. And for a century, they withdrew far more than nature could ever deposit. The science of what happened next is as simple as it is terrifying. Think of the aquifer as a giant, waterlogged sponge, compressed under the weight of millions of tons of dirt. As long as the sponge is full of water, it maintains its shape and supports the weight of the world above it. But when you pump that water out to the surface to keep almond trees green during a five-year drought, the pores of that sponge begin to empty. Without the internal pressure of the water to hold the soil grains apart, gravity takes over. The weight of the valley floor crushes those empty spaces flat. This process is called compaction, and it is a one-way street. Once the clay layers are crushed, the land loses its elasticity. In the scientific community, this is known as irreversible subsidence. You could have a winter of record-breaking floods, like the atmospheric rivers of recent years, and it wouldn't matter. The ground has lost its ability to soak that water back up. The underground storage locker has been destroyed. The earth doesn't just get dry, it becomes denser, harder, and lower. The actual footage from the valley floor captures the sheer scale of this collapse in a way that numbers on a page cannot. In places like El Nido and Mendota, the ground has dropped by more than 28 feet since the 20s. To the naked eye, it's hard to notice because it happens across such a vast area, but the evidence is everywhere once you know where to look. You see it in the protruding well casings, steel pipes that were once flush with the dirt but now stick tenaciously 10 or 15 feet into the air, as if the earth has literally shrunk away from them. The most haunting aspect of this vanishing act is that it is silent. There are no tremors, no cracks in the sky, and no sudden sinkholes. It is a slow, methodical sagging of the American heartland. Since the mid-20th century, 
Parts of the valley have been sinking at a rate of nearly two inches per month during peak pumping seasons. That is fast enough to watch the horizon change over the course of a single human generation. We are now living in the era of the permanent low. The valley is no longer the height it was when our grandfathers farmed it. This isn't just an environmental footnote. It is a fundamental change in the geography of California. When the ground sinks, it changes the way everything moves. From the wind patterns across the flatlands to the way water flows through the veins of the state's massive irrigation network, we have traded the very foundation of the valley for short-term survival. And now, we are left standing on a floor that is still falling. But the disappearing ground is only the beginning of the wreckage, the architecture of ruin. When the earth moves on a geological scale, the man-made world on top of it begins to tear itself apart. In California's Central Valley, we aren't just seeing cracks in the pavement. We are witnessing the systemic failure of the most complex water delivery system ever built by man. This is the architecture of ruin, a landscape where billion-dollar infrastructure projects are being rendered obsolete, not by age, but by the literal shifting of the horizon. The most glaring evidence of this aftermath can be found along the California Aqueduct. This massive concrete artery is designed to move water from the wet north to the dry south, using nothing but the subtle pull of gravity. It is an engineering marvel that requires a precise, consistent slope to function. But as the ground beneath the canal sinks, the slope disappears. In some sections, the land has dropped so significantly that the canal now has bowls or humps. Instead of a smooth flow, the water pools in sunken depressions, forcing the state to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to build massive pump stations just to push the water uphill over the new ridges created by subsidence. Footage from the Friant Kern Canal reveals a similar ghost story. This canal, which provides water to over a million acres of farmland, has lost over 60% of its carrying capacity in certain reaches. Why? Because the ground literally buckled. Engineers are now forced to perform emergency surgery on the earth, raising the banks of the canal just to keep the water from spilling out into the sunken fields. It is a desperate race against a collapsing floor, and it is a race that the concrete is losing. But the ruin extends far beyond the waterworks. For the people living in the small rural towns that dot the valley, the aftermath is personal and expensive. In communities like Corcoran and Fairmead, the sinking isn't a theoretical concept discussed in state offices. It's a sound heard in the middle of the night. It's the sound of a house's wooden frame groaning as the foundation beneath it snaps. Residents show footage of front doors that no longer shut, and windows that have shattered spontaneously because the square frame of the house has become a parallelogram. The economic fallout of this structural instability is a silent catastrophe for home values. In any other part of the country, a home is an investment, a piece of solid ground. In the sinking zones of the Central Valley, that ground is a liability. Real estate data is beginning to reflect a subsidence discount. Who wants to buy a home where the septic lines back up because the yard is now lower than the house? Who wants to invest in a business where the warehouse floor is pitching at a five-degree angle? We are seeing a slow-motion exodus of capital as the literal foundation of wealth. Land proves to be unreliable. Then there are the bridges to nowhere. Perhaps the most surreal footage in this documentary involves the valley's road crossings. Because the land is sinking while the bridges, often built on deeper, more stable pilings, stay relatively still, the relationship between the road and the water has flipped. There are bridges in the San Joaquin Valley that are now so low, they act as dams during high water events. Rubbish and debris clog the undersides, and local counties have had to close vital transit routes because the clearance for trucks and boats has vanished. To fix a single bridge can cost millions. To fix all of them is an impossible task for local tax bases already stretched thin. The most tragic irony of the architecture of ruin is that the very people who were trying to save their livelihoods by pumping water are the ones now paying the highest price for the damage. 
The farmer who pumped groundwater to save his almond trees in 2015 is now looking at a 2025 repair bill for a buckled irrigation pipe that costs more than the crop was worth. It is a feedback loop of destruction. We built a civilization on the assumption that the ground was a constant, a fixed point in an uncertain world. The footage of the Central Valley proves that when you overdraw from nature's accounts, even the earth beneath your feet becomes a moving target. While the buildings crack, the very soul of the valley, its trees, is beginning to fade. The Ghost Orchards For decades, the Central Valley was defined by its vibrant, aggressive green. It was a place where the dirt felt like magic. If you added water, you could grow anything. But today, actual footage of the region reveals a jarring new color palette, the gray and brittle brown of ghost orchards. These are the skeletal remains of what was once the most expensive real estate in agriculture. Row after row of almond, pistachio, and citrus trees now stand dead in the sun. Their branches bleached white and their leaves long ago surrendered to the wind. These aren't just dead plants. They are the monuments of a finished era. The cause of this mass die-off is a combination of nature's limits and human intervention. In 2014, California passed the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or SGMA. For the first time in the state's history, there was a speed limit placed on how much water farmers could pump from the ground. The goal was to stop the sinking, but the aftermath was an economic shockwave. Without the ability to pump unlimited water during dry years, thousands of farmers were forced to make a Sophie's choice. Which half of their farm should they let die so the other half can live? The footage shows the results of that choice. We see fallowed land stretching to the horizon, fields that have been intentionally abandoned because there simply isn't enough water to go around. It is estimated that by 2040, at least 500,000 to 1 million acres of farmland in the Central Valley will have to be retired permanently. To put that in perspective, that is an area larger than the state of Rhode Island being wiped off the agricultural map. This is the unexpected aftermath of sustainability. While the law may eventually stop the valley from sinking, it is doing so by dismantling the very industry that built it. The human cost of these ghost orchards is found in the small tractor towns that act as the valley's heartbeat. When an orchard dies, the ecosystem around it collapses. The packing houses go quiet. The tractor dealerships board up their windows. The local schools lose students as families move away in search of work in the coastal cities. In towns like Mendota and Huron, the footage captures a sense of mourning. These are communities built on the promise of the soil and they are watching that promise evaporate. For a fourth generation farmer, watching your trees die isn't just a financial loss. It's the erasure of your family's legacy. There is a specific kind of silence in a ghost orchard. In a healthy grove, you hear the hum of bees, the rustle of leaves, and the hiss of irrigation lines. In the aftermath, you hear only the sound of wood cracking under its own weight. Many of these trees are pushed bulldozed into massive piles and burned because it is cheaper than trying to keep them alive. The smoke from these orchard funerals often fills the valley air, a bitter reminder of the region's shrinking footprint. Investors who once poured billions into permanent crops like almonds, believing they were a safe bet for global exports, are now fleeing the region. The footage shows vast stretches of land being converted into something entirely different solar farms. Black glass panels are replacing the green canopy. While solar energy is a win for the climate, it provides almost no jobs for the local community compared to an active farm. The ghost orchards are being replaced by a silent, robotic industry that doesn't need water, but also doesn't need people. The tragedy of the Central Valley is that it did exactly what it was asked to do. It fed the world at any cost. Now, as we look at the footage of these abandoned groves, we are seeing the cost in real time. We are realizing that the garden of the world was built on a credit card that has finally hit its limit. The green is receding, and in its place, the valley is returning to its natural state, a harsh, dry basin where only the strongest survive. 
As the green disappears, the air itself is becoming a silent killer, a breath of poison. When the orchards die and the soil is no longer held down by the roots of millions of trees, the Central Valley transforms into something predatory. The aftermath isn't just a change in the view, it is a change in the very air the residents breathe. Without the lush canopy of the farms to act as a windbreak and a moisture trap, the valley has become a massive, sun-baked bowl of fine, particulate dust. This is not the clean sand of a coastal desert. It is a toxic slurry of a century's worth of industrial remnants. Actual footage from the region during the dry summer months shows dust walls that rival the images from the 30s. But the danger is microscopic. For a hundred years, this dirt was treated with heavy pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. As the land is fallowed and the topsoil dries out, those chemicals, long buried, are being kicked back into the atmosphere. Scientists are finding traces of banned substances like DDT and heavy metals in the dust that now coats the playgrounds of rural schools. The land is effectively exhaling the poisons we spent decades forcing into it. However, the most immediate threat in these toxic clouds is a living one. Deep in the alkaline soil of the San Joaquin Valley lives a fungus called coccidioids. When the soil is disturbed, either by the sinking of the earth, the fallowing of land, or the construction of solar farms on abandoned plots, the fungal spores are launched into the air. When inhaled, they cause a disease known as valley fever. Footage from local clinics reveals a health crisis that is quietly exploding. Once a rare local ailment, cases of valley fever have surged by over 40% in recent years, leaving previously healthy farm workers and children with permanent lung damage or, in severe cases, meningitis. The irony is thick and bitter. The farmers stopped pumping water to save the ground from sinking, but in doing so, they created a desert that is making the air unbreathable. This is the unexpected health aftermath of environmental regulation. As we transition from Green Valley to Dust Valley, the medical infrastructure of these small towns is being pushed to the brink. People who have lived here for generations are now being told to stay indoors with HEPA filters running, effectively becoming prisoners in their own homes to avoid a breath of wind. This atmospheric shift is also changing the very climate of the valley. Without the transpiration, the moisture released by plants, the valley is getting hotter. The heat island effect, once reserved for big cities like Los Angeles, is now settling over the rural flats. The footage shows the shimmering heat waves rising off the black solar panels and the cracked, fallowed dirt. The natural cooling system of the valley has been unplugged. We are witnessing a man-made desertification that is picking up speed, creating a feedback loop where the hotter it gets, the more the soil turns to powder and the more the poison spreads. As we look at the grainy drone shots of the hazy horizon, we realize that the aftermath nobody expected is that the land is fighting back. It is no longer a passive stage for human industry. By breaking the water cycle and collapsing the ground, we have unleashed a biological and chemical ghost that won't be easily put back in the bottle. The breath of poison is the final warning from a landscape that has been pushed past its breaking point. A reminder that when we destroy the health of the soil, our own health is the next thing to go. The dust eventually settles, but the valley that remains is unrecognizable. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this.